I got so many things that I want to talk on, so I'm just, I guess, what, 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 what we have called this today, just money talk, because I got so much to talk on. Amen. We just talking today. Amen. And, and I always have this tune. I always like to play. Amen. When we dealing with this topic. Amen. I know y'all ain't ready for me, but here, here it is. I know y'all ain't ready for this. Hallelujah. But this, this is a fact. This is a fact. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't ready for me, sister. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> but this is what it's about. This is what it's about. Woo! <laughs> amen. Amen. This is about money. And I amen. And we haven't taken an offering yet. But this is about money. Amen. You know, money is an important thing. Well, it's more than just money, it's about finances. Amen. You know, I'm going to tell y'all something. This is, I might be, I am, I think I am, and you, your pastors are, are one and only pastors. You won't be going finding other people like us. We are unique. This church is unique. We told you a lot. You are unique, you are unique people. It takes unique pastors to pastor unique people. <laughs> Special kind of pastor, pastor, special kind of people. Amen. But, but, uh, but we're different. But I, you know, I've always said since I've been in church, amen, that, you know, I want to see the people of God blessed. I don't want to play no games. I don't want to pull no, we, we, we're not going to do the, the rabbit tricks. We, we're not going to do the red string tricks and the handkerchief tricks. Now, I know and I believe that God did great and mighty works through Paul and Peter, and I know there are supernatural things that you can use through that. I, I'm not knocking that, but I'm saying many times people use gimmicks <clears throat> to get money from you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I don't use gimmicks. I'm not going to use gimmicks, uh, but uh, I, I want to mature people. I want people that trusted in God and in, in his word that they'll get a hold of God and follow what the Lord say because that's what's going to get you over, not gimmicks and tricks and not me, me trying to uh, work on your, emo your emotions to get you to give because they're going to go high and lows and everything. But you need a consistency. You need to grow in your faith and in that area of giving or, or finances in your, in your life. But one thing I've said, I said, uh, I don't want to pass the broke people and stingy people. I don't want to pass the broke people and stingy people. Now, we come to the Lord at all kind of levels and all kind of places in, in our lives. Now, somebody that was paying $8 tithe, now, you would consider that one broke. <laughs> and that's where I was at, $8, amen. But you know what? You don't have to stay broke, amen. That's the thing about it. We come in broke, but we don't have to stay broke. Ten years later, five years later, 20 years later, you're still broke. You're still living from paycheck to paycheck. You're still driving hooped. You still owe everybody in town. Amen. That is not the will of God for you. Something is wrong, and you're still tight. You're still stingy. I can't, yeah, you don't have, got zero credit scores. Amen. Now, we teach, in October, you, we usually teach on finance. We usually have little, little in-house semi, uh, seminars because I want you to learn about money. You got to treat money like a woman. Amen. Amen. If you don't treat money right, money will leave you. Amen. And ladies, can I get an amen? amen? If you don't treat a woman right, she's going to leave you. Amen. You got to respect your woman, and you got to respect money. Amen. You got to treat it right. There's all kind of principles in the Bible about money. And another thing, as I said, not being stingy, because I was, I was, and I'm hard on stingy people, because I was uh, myself a little tight. I call myself conservative, though. Because, see, I work for my money. I didn't try to steal and, and jive people out of money. I worked, I worked hard 
the boy worked hard for his money. Amen. So I don't spend my money on a whole lot of crazy stuff. Amen. So I, I call myself conservative. Right, Sister Love? Amen. So, but when it comes down to the things of God, I can't understand people. That, that's, one, that's one person I can't understand. That if you are a believer and the Lord saved you, he have delivered you, he shed his blood for you, he hung on the cross for you, he became, he was rich, but he came poor, amen, that you might become rich, and then you still stingy. I don't understand you. I, I'm kind of like David was told the sons of uh, 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 Zerilah, I believe that was his name. He said, y'all y'all boys too hard for me. Amen. So you're, you're too hard for me. I can't understand you. I can't get you why you're so stingy, why you're so tight with the things of God. But then you can just go down to Six Flags or go to the Fair Park or go to Jerry World and you're shuffling hundreds and fifties and sixties and and don't even think nothing about it. Paying twenty dollars for a hot dog, won't even think nothing about it. But you give a little money, you give twenty to to the church, and you're you're mad. Amen. The dollar, amen, lives in the church. The dollar go nowhere but the church. Amen. But we're gonna talk about finances today because I want you, I desire for every member of this church to live in a good uh, a good level of income, a good level of a, a, a lifestyle. I want you to drive the type of car you want to drive. If you want to drive a Jag, amen, go at it, amen. I, that's what I want you. If you want you a big old Mac mention, a Mac mention, amen, fine, praise God. I mean, I, I want God to bless you and to prosper you, but I know there's a way for God to prosper you and to bless you. Now, a lady told me one time, and she spun off, told me I, was a, I didn't have no faith. And she kind of hurt me that day. But then, you know, I'm in a different place today. Amen. Amen. There's no way somebody driving a Pinto and living with somebody else going to hurt me anymore. <laughs> I should have I I hit my own self kick. Amen. For letting anybody discourage me driving a Pinto and living with somebody else and telling me I didn't have no faith. And I don't want to open up a church in Rockwall, just me and my, my wife and my mother-in-law and my sons and, and Jesse, amen, just that's all we had, and I'm standing, and, and a building would look like that, I think my mama-in-law liked to cry when she saw it, but we, we worked on that building, God blessed us, amen. amen, and she telling me I don't have no faith, bought the building, amen, own it, we own it right now, amen, amen. and she telling me I don't have no faith, but I'm going to tell you, you know, people like the I, I work from a different angle, I guess, because God worked through nature also. I know y'all want the miracles and the supernatural all the time, but God sometimes worked through the natural things also. You got me? Uh, that's how you got here. You got here through a natural process. Though you're a miracle. The Bible says you're fearful and wonderfully made. You are a miracle, but yet you got here through a natural process. Jesus had a supernatural conception, but it took Mary nine months, just like everybody else. She, he came here the same way everybody else. God got a way of blessing you and prospering you, but we need to stick with God's plan. Amen. Listen, the church lives as its memory gives. The church lives as the members give. It's the duty of every member. If you're a member of Emmanuel, not first tabernacle full, gospel, Pentecostal, whatever, but if you're a member of Emmanuel New Life, if you're a member of this church, if your attendance is here, it's your responsibility to give. We don't go out soliciting money. Amen. The other way, I sometimes we accept y'all little ideas and whatever, but I know that's not the best way. 
that's not the way I really want to do things. Amen. But it's the member's responsibility, even when you're not here, to make sure that your money get here. Amen, Amen. Amen somebody. Amen. So each member should faithfully participate in the work, in the ministry, in the activities that goes on here at the church. You need to get involved. I'm going to tell y'all something. The church that I got that, that we left, amen, and we didn't leave in a bad way, amen. You seen Pastor Vernon here, amen. You seen the pastor's daughter. They was all here, the pastor. We didn't leave on the bad terms, amen. But so, but the church that we left, it's torn down now. But you could see, I could take you back and show you an area where I had worked. I can show you an area where I had participated to pay certain things. In other words, I made myself, and I learned this, if you want to grow, if you want to be a part of the church, if you want to get to the place where can't nobody run you out just because they looked at you funny, they said something funny, you got to make it yours. You got to be an owner, not a renter. If you begin to be an owner, can't nobody run you out of your house. They can't come and repossess your property, amen, if you become an owner. Amen. amen. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't like my teaching. But you got to be, you got to invest in something. That's why you fight over those little kids in a minute because you have invested in them. Is that right? Amen. You don't walk. You done walk with them for nine months, carry them for nine months. You done paid the doctor bills and the dentist bills and food bills and every kind of other bill, amen. You got investment in them, and therefore you don't let nobody run your child down. I don't care if they is bad. Help me out now, mamas. Y'all know I'm right. So you'll be looking at me all sanctified like you ain't. No, no, you you know, you know, you press that button and Mama Bear is after you. Listen, listen. So you, it's the same way in the church. That's why the devil wants you to run and run you out of church all the time. He want to get you to the place of a movement all the time because you ain't never took ownership. You never took ownership on this thing. I can't run away from my family. I'm a stiggers. I don't care how bad they act. I'm still one of them. I, I'm off a topic a little bit, but I'm just telling you something. But I, my brother, I had an older brother, just as good as he can be, amen. But he get that liquor in him, and he be a just a fool, but he's as good as he can be when he's sober. And sometimes the guy will say, man, I seen your brother. He done, he's just sloppy drunk. What are you doing? He's cussing with him. I, but I said, okay, that's still my brother. Sometimes that's the way we act, amen. We don't act up. We don't act right all the time. But you say, that's still my sister. That's still my church. Amen. It, it might be a little sloped, amen. The floor might be a little slanted. You might have to catch a handrail that could come in. But that's my church. Amen. The choir might be a little bit off, but uh, that's still my church. Amen. The pastor might not can sing a lick, but you say that still my pastor. Amen. Because I still got to say that's still my member. Get to the point that don't everybody don't just can't run you off for everything when you get an investment in people and in things. And you got to have this. Amen. Listen, my, my, my topic is going to a little bit change a little bit because of the situation that we're in, but, but there's still some things that we need to stay on, on point with. Amen. Uh, there's principles that we have to just stick with. I don't care how time hard things might get. I don't care how crazy things might get. We got to stick with the principles. Star Trek, I don't know if y'all ever watched Star Trek. Thank you. Y'all ought to watch Star Trek. Captain Kirk, James T. Kirk, Starship 
USS Enterprise. Amen. Come on. Whenever they go to Strange New World, they got a primary directive that guides them on how to do, uh, how to make contact and, and how to communicate and how not to be involved in their, their affairs. But it showed them, it guided them. And I'm going to tell you, we got a prime directive that you got to stick with. I don't care as you're traveling into these hard times and these difficult seasons in your life, amen, you need to stick with the prime directive. Don't move from what the word that what you have been taught. Don't move from the instruction of God's word. Stay with the ship. Stay with the things that God has put in you. There are principles. That's why doctrines, and I know we don't like to hear doctrine about doctrine, but doctrine is about teaching. We need to be uh, uh, rooted and grounded in correct teaching. Not by feeling the emotions of what we see, but what the truth is. There's principles that God has given us for increase and for finances. It calls a seed. It calls a seed. In Genesis 8 and 22, it says, while the earth remain, there will be seed time and harvest. Cold and heat. As long as the earth remains, there's going to be a principle in effect. I know there's some things that is coming, amen, but the principles of God will still be in effect. Amen. The seed is the beginning. It's the source. And in every seed, you got a hundredfold potential. Amen. But the seed is the start of something. It's the, it's the spark. And every, in every one of us, God is going to make sure that you got a seed. He won't leave you here without a seed. He won't leave you here with something that you can't get start, start up on. It'll spark you up on. Amen. It's, but it's the beginning. Your job is where you get your seed money at. It don't support you in everything, but it's your seed money. I want to encourage the young people here about, you know, in their little jobs and their little businesses they start and continue to doing that because that's the next step we have to go to that as people of color we have to move into is, is entrepreneurship, as business owners. Amen. We, I know when we were younger, be. Our parents, a lot of our parents even get out of high school, and, and, they, and they was always pushing us to finish school. But now we're in a different level. We're in a different season in our life. You can have a college education and still be unemployed. But you still, amen, we still must seek, you know, that higher level of learning. But the next step that we need to approach, amen, is ownership. Not working for somebody else, not getting, getting out of school and getting a job, but, amen, getting out of school, learn, amen, and run your own business, and then you can, you not be looking for nobody to hire you, nor fire you. And, and you not be worried about no COVID mandate because you the owner. You the owner. You not be worried about no eight to five because you the owner. But I'm, I guarantee you you're going to be working more than eight to five you the owner. You'll be working 16, 17 hours. But see, but but you the owner though. You can go and you can come as you please. You know how the control they have on you? That you got to ask them for permission for everything. Can can I go to my mama's grave? Can I get a funeral today? And they, oh no, no, we, we got to have you. I mean, it's all kind of crazy stuff. You got to ask them for everything. But if you the owner, you don't have to ask them nothing. You the owner. You can give yourself a raise anytime you want to. That's the next level that we have to get into. We're just talking about money today. You see, we as people of color, we are spenders. We spend everything we get. That's why those people are all in our neighborhood. Because that money don't take but one trip. To the store and out. 
Ooh, I am preaching. But see, y'all don't hear this speak. I want more from you than, than your few dollar bills. I want your few dollar. I want some twenties and some hundreds. Amen. But at the same time, I want you to be driving up here with some nice cars and living a good, decent life. If you want a steak, you eat your steak. You don't owe nobody. That's where I want you to be at for more than anything. Listen, listen, God have a plan for us to bless us and to prosper us. It's called your seed. And your seed, you get your seed on, on your job, amen. It give you seed money. But when you get a seed, it ain't all for you. Over in Genesis 47, 23, uh, uh, Joseph is, is t telling the people in Egypt, when the famine came, uh, Joseph uh, uh, went and bought all the land from the people. And Joseph said, this is what Joseph told him. Joseph said, then Joseph said unto the people, Behold, I have brought you this day in your land for Pharaoh. I have brought you and you this day in your land for Pharaoh. Lo, here is seed for you. Here's, here's some seed for you. All right? I know y'all say that's my money, and it's all for me. It's not all for you. We, see, we got to get some things straight, and I hope we get it straight, but I'm not going to argue with y'all this morning. I, I am not going to argue with you. Thank you. Because uh, I know my pastor told me one time about tithing, and I know what my mindset was back in the day. I know where my mind was at. I, you know, I'm saying, hey, this is, I ain't heard about no 10%. I'm talking about giving an offering. I ain't heard about that. I only make $80 and $90 a week if I get that sometime. You talking about 10%? Don't you? But my pastor only came to me once. Once. And I obeyed. See, now we're, we're in a season where Y'all got to find out who who gonna be your pastor. Who you gonna listen through to? Cause as as we traverse through this season of our life in this different time in our life, you can't have a whole lot of voices. Go this way. Go this way. Don't do this. Stop here. Uh, 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 left. Right. Go. Oh, stop. You can't. You can't. You can't afford that. You hear all these pastors now telling you what to do. I said, wait a minute now. I don't agree with them. But but I'm saying that's you. But you're hearing all kind of voices out there. You got to know who who you're going to follow. And that's just simple, simple as that. He says, there is seed for you, and you shall sow the land. See, I'm giving you a seed, and you shall do what? Sow the land. You got to give it up. That's a principle. You got to give it up. You can pray all you want. God, give me a job. Give me a job. Lord, bless me. But if you don't ever open a door and walk out of, of it and, and fill out an application, you know, there's a principle involved in, in this. You can you You, you can... Starve to death and have a, a, a bucket full of seeds, potatoes and beans and stuff. But yes, you're going to starve to death because you do you didn't give it up. Jesus said, Jesus said, unless unless a seed fall to the ground and die, it'll abide alone. But he said, if it die, and he was speaking of himself, if I die, I'm going to bring forth much, much fruit. But it's the same way in our life. You got to give. If you want to receive, the Bible tells us a principle. There's a law in this. Don't look at it as a scripture anymore. Look as, at it as a law. Gravity. Gravity is a what? They told you that in school, didn't they? Look. What go up, come down. It's a law. 
Every time a plane go down, it's because it got caught defying gravity. They had put other systems in place to defy gravity, stress and push and lift and all that, but something went wrong and gravity caught them. The law is always in effect. The principles that God will give you, it will be always in effect. The reason you stay broke is because you won't listen. You won't obey. Because God put seed in your hands. And I don't, I don't care how, where you first came at, in at, amen. If you would listen to God and obey his principles, God will increase. Because listen, the thing about God, I tell people, well, the problem what you're going to have with serving the Lord, that if you obey him and serve him, he's going to bless you. That's the problem. And you got to be able to handle blessings. And a lot of us it can't handle blessing. If you stay in church long enough, you'll see people come in church with nothing. And as they start living for the Lord and serving the Lord, God starts giving them things to bless them. And if they ain't rooted and grounded, if this material thing got them more than, more than they got God, they walks out. Because God got, they start getting blessed. We've seen it over and over and over again. They love material thing more than they love God. Material thing will draw you from God too. You got to be watchful of your own self. Material thing will draw you from God. You got to watch yourself. Listen. You got to put your hand to something. And you got to make it yours. You got to own it. There's power in the seed. Power. It's loaded. It's a little thing, but it's loaded. If you would plant a seed, when y'all, we that farm and do a little garden and everything, you put one bean down. Put one bean, one bean, one little bean down in the, in the ground and watch that thing grow. It'll bring up parts. With 10 beans or more in each part. You pick that thing and you wait a couple of uh, a day later and, and another flower will pop up and it brings some more. Yeah. It's power in a seed. Sometimes you don't think that what little you have is not worth anything, but there's power in your hand. There's power in that seed if you do it right, if you act on it right, if you do it, give it with the right attitude, put it in the right soil. Y'all don't like my teaching. You don't, you don't give your money to Jake, the, the, the wine old, for an offering. That belonged to the house of God. That belonged to God. Oh, I'm going to get in a minute. You sow and you invest in the right thing. Put your money to work. Put your seed to work. Same way about investing in things, you put your money into work and something that's going to make you more money. It's the same way we'll buy financial thing in the spiritual area. I like to put my money into, into, into the things of God where I know that it's going to reap me some benefits later on. Amen. Because what I do for the Lord, amen, there's souls that it's going to be saving. Lives going to be changed. So I want to put it into things where people are going to be affected for the kingdom's sake. God put you in here for a reason. God will raise up some people to, to, to save the whales. He'll raise up some people to care for the dogs. But he raised you up for the work of the ministry. And you give more to a dog than you would do for the work of God, for a soul. For a dying soul. A trembling soul somewhere. But you too caught up in the save the whales and saving the dogs. You know you need to save Mary. What about Billy over here? Oh, 
wine oh in, in the in, in the street prostitute. What about them? Listen, listen to what he said in the 24th verse. He said, it shall come to pass that you shall give fifth part to Pharaoh. God asked for a tenth. He said, you're going to give a fifth to Pharaoh. Four parts shall, you, shall be your own for seed of the field. That what, that what I'm going to give you, part of it going to go to, for, you need to do this. You need to follow instruction. You need to plan it. Not eat it all, but plan it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? We need to stop living from paycheck to paycheck. Don't live, that's a bad place to, to be at in life. You got to live from paycheck to paycheck. You get a, a $100, $200 uh, a bill in and you're, you're breaking. God don't want that for you. That is not the will of God for you. And sometimes you get one come in about a 1000 or two. Sometimes just like we just had, amen, that you get laid off. They say you need to have at least six months. They, but now they're saying about a year or so. You need to have about a year of income saved up. Are, are you ready? About a year, or oh, you're ready for six months. You need to have that. That's money you don't touch. In case something like we just went through happen. In case that man come in talking crazy to you. You have you something that okay? I got six months to year. Money saved up, I can go and find me another job. Uh, you know, but but you know, when, when when you don't have nothing saved up, they talk to you crazy, and you know what? You don't sit there and take it. When you owe everybody, we're talking finances, we're talking money talk. When when you owe everybody in town, the Bible said the 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 borrower is servant to the lender. When you owe everybody in town, you're gonna stay on that job. That's why you. That's why y'all go to work sick, but you won't come come to church sick. Woo! That's why. That's why they might have made you mad at work, but you still going to you still going to work. But you they they make you mad at church. You ain't going to church no more. But you still get your side your behind up. And it can be raining and slick and wet, and you're still going to that J-O-B. Just over broke. Because that's what they're going to give you, just over broke. They don't give you enough to really, I told you, that's your seed money that you need to be, but, but you're going to get up and slip and slide all the way. But just let it rain. No, just let the weatherman say it's going to rain Wednesday. Just let the degree drop to 32 degrees. It's freezing. 32 degrees will stop us from going to church. One drain, one rain drop will stop the saints from coming to church. But it won't stop you from that job. Something is wrong with the church. Something is wrong with you. Four parts shall be your own for seed and for your food. You can eat part of it, but you need to plant part of it. And for them in your household. Then some of it is some of the money that you get is for your family. Amen. If anybody in your family in need, you want to have something to help them out with from time to time. I, I'm not saying they be you you 
they bombing on you all the time, but you want to have yourself in a position that you can help somebody else. What God gives you is not only for you, but it is also to help somebody else. But see, when you're broke and you're stingy, you don't have, you won't do that. You won't think that way. This is mine. This is for me. But it's for you and for somebody else. And it's second, he said, for, for food for your little one, to take care of your children. God wants you to take care of your children. These are principles. These are fundamental concepts that we need to get a hold to. Amen. Listen. Look what the scriptures say about money. It say, he that loveth and eat at five, eat class at five and ten. Said, he that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. Now, this is what all we, we, we reach, reach, preach on today is about getting, 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 having, having, having. Uh, material thing, but there's more than that, amen. If you, if that is your whole focus in life, the Lord, that you'll never be satisfied with. You get a million, you want another million. The Lord said, "Your a man life is not is not uh, uh, only abundance of the thing which he, not consistent of abundance of the thing which he possesses. So your life got to be more than just getting thing and having thing. Are y'all with me? Well, you don't watch out. That's all you're about. That's all you hear in the church. That's all, that's all you hear on TV. Do you want to look at the lifestyle of the rich and famous? And that's where all we geared about getting, having, having. The Bible even said it that money can't buy you love. There are a lot of people that are broken hearted in these big old mansions. A lot of divorces up in these big mansions. They was one sleep in one room on one side of the house, the other on the other side of the house in these big mansions. Amen. Listen, it says, when good increase, they are increased that eat them. So more, more money you get, more friend you're going to get. More tag along you're going to get. They say they're your friend, but they ain't really your friend. You remember about the prodigal son? Long as he had money, he had a lot of friends. Amen. Y'all better get some sense when you get a little money. They're going to tag along. They're going to come like honey, honey, uh, flies to honey. They're going to tag along. They're going to fly. They're going to light up on you. But you better get you some sense. I, I'm going to tell y'all something. I've seen this so many times. Sometimes we get a little lump sum of $10,000, $20,000, and, boy, we just go crazy because when people don't know how to handle money, when they get a little, and that's not a really a whole lot of money, but to them, that's a lot of money. To you. Oh, I'm teaching this morning. They go on these buying sprees. Buying, buying cars and cash. <laughs> buying clothes, new appliances. You, it's already working, but you, you, but you got money though. And and sometimes these folks that's on drugs, you know, we we know at least two family that have killed, they have killed themselves because they got some money and they went in a hotel and just. Killed themselves, overdosed themselves. People that don't know how to handle money, amen, will do such foolishness. But let me just give you a little heads up. And by chance, if you got a rich uncle, a niece, or somebody died back, you know, if by chance the IRS said we have misquoted and misfigured your money, we owe you twenty thousand dollars. Just by chance, if you get a big lump sum of money. Don't go and spend it. Don't quit your job. You don't have enough to quit your job on.
You give me $20,000, you'll never know I had it. <laughs> so stick on me all the time. What you going to spend? I ain't spending nothing. Because I'm looking down the line. I'm looking down the road, amen. I, I, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to supply uh, these car lots and uh, their family uh, 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 vacations and, and and new car. I, ain't, I, I it's not my deal. I want to provide myself a vacation. I want to provide myself a big old nice home. But I, I'm not trying to do it for them. You will never know. What it is if you do it. it it's a cushion. It's a step. Well, when, 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 they, when the boss man started acting up and stupid and everything, that either you can, you can take that better. You, you sit up there and just smile at him. Okay, he up, he up there talking and acting crazy and, and threatening you and all that. You're like, okay, okay. Because you know you got your nest egg back there. You know you got you some money back there that it can last you another t uh, 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 12 months or to two years. You, you know you got some it ain't enough for you to quit. It's a cushion for you. And we're so small-minded, we're going to spin it up. And within six months, it's gone. That ain't what to do, people. Learn the principles of God. Learn and be good. You're supposed to be a steward of God's money. Everything you get belongs to God. Not part of it, but all of it. And God have entrusted you to be a steward. Y'all know what a steward is? It's a manager. It's a, it's, it's a manager over the things he's giving you. So God will make you a steward, so you need to be a good steward. First thing you need to do is make sure you pay your tithes and offering. But you don't. And tithe is ten. Not five, not three, not two. Thank you. The sleep of the laboring man is sweet. Go to work. I'm telling you how to make it. I'm telling you how to be successful. Go to work. The Bible always speaks about us being industrious, Joseph being industrious, always talking about laboring with your own hand, not stealing, having working so that you can have to give to others and support others. It don't say nothing about you laying at home. By, matter of fact, Paul said, I've heard there's some of you among you don't work at all. He said, if they don't work, don't let them eat. If that boy, that woman, if they can't work and they got a good sound body, got a good mind, and they set up at your table, you need to run them away from it. If they ain't working, and you see all these young men and women, strong men and women will not work for nothing. Drive up in five of them in a car and want to borrow some gas money. They don't have no shame. They'll send their wives into the church and all the little children so that the church will give them some money because they're too lazy to go to work and support their children. That's why I call them Bow Wows. Go to work. That's the way that you God blesses you by working. But see, I know, I know that ain't supernatural, miracle, you know, power. And another thing, how God will prosper you and bless you, get you a higher le level of learning. Amen. Boy, you get your skill of trade, you moving on up. Amen. Oh, boy. We don't like books. We don't like education. But that's what you got to do sometimes. I hear that you young people, y'all going to gonna have to have about, y'all going to have about seven or eight professions before it's all over with. Y'all went through about seven or eight professions. You got to continue to learn, train yourself. I thank God for Miss Frazier. Amen. She's an example for all of us. She, she's somebody we all should be looking up to. Amen. Went and got her degree. 
we got to continue being a, in a state of learning. Advancing. Because more education you get, more income you're going to make. And see, the way they have, uh, how they make advantage, take advantage of us a lot of time when we are not more uh, the educated people type, where they come in with all this stuff, you know, about the red rags and the things, all those gimmicks, send your money, amen, and you're going to be blessed, you know, send me $100 and, and you're going to be blessed like me. Well, if all y'all send me $100, I'll be blessed too. Send me a hundred, send me a thousand dollars then. I'll show you. I'll be setting up a big old sofa and big nice house. Y'all be blessed just like me. <laughs> but did you get what they saying? And we will go and send them a thousand dollars. I'll give you I'll, I'll give you some, some holy water. Right out of the river of Jordan. But you don't know where it came from. Right out of that water fountain. <laughs> you don't know where. They're all kind of game they play on us. Because we but they play on us though. The more educated people, they, they can't do that on them because they don't need no money. They got their money. So they got to come up with something else with them. But don't let the enemy fool us any longer. Take the principle, do the principles that God has given us about finances and, and work and, and put these things to effect. And, and these little payday loans and stuff they come up with, don't do that. Don't borrow, don't be. They've been putting this stuff in, the, in our front door, but I now they just give me a time to talk about them. But don't be, all these old payday loans and all this stuff, don't you do that. That lets you know how your congressmen and how, you, how your lawmaker feel about you. For, for them to seek these people on you. You go and get a title loan. And I, I had a friend said his daddy got one old title loan. He said, if the title do, if the loan is due at 12 o'clock, if you're not in that office at 12 o'clock, that car cuts off. I guess you can be on the freeway or wherever. That car cuts off. Stay away from those things. Get yourself in a position you don't need no payday loan. Get yourself in a position that you don't have to work on these high interest rates. These interest rates up to 25% and more. Don't you know if you paid a minimum amount, you don't pay 20 times for that product. That's why I keep saying that if you don't, if you don't have good credit, you're going to pay more than the average person. You're going to pay more for your car, more for everything. Stop it. Learn some things. Stop doing the stupid stuff, making everybody else rich, and you getting poor and poor. You, one day, one day, you're going to be looking like me, or even worse. <laughs> you're going to get old one day. And I don't want them taking me. I don't want them taking me in the nursing home. I'm serious about that. Brother Charlie, they ain't taking me anywhere. I've, you know, we done did ministry in those, some of those places. Some of those, I don't want to be in some of those places. So there's incentive for me to make sure I do the work on this side. And by the time I get in, on, in this area, I, I can have myself prepared for something. Because you don't want to go in all these places. You open up the door and you smell. Oh, no. I don't, I don't, I don't know about such thing, but I got myself fixed. <laughs> uh, I'm going, I got myself fixed, so I go me a good place. <laughs> I ain't no. Amen. I'm going to a high class place, Sister Linda. Amen. Best I can. No, no. What I say? I said, as long as I live, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of her. Amen. I'm gonna take care of her. Amen. 
but listen, make sure, but all these things, prepare. If things, if things keep going on, you're going to get older, you're going to get aged, and you're not going to be able to work. You, you, you know the only asset you have is you. <laughs> yeah. you you the only one. And when you can't get up and go no more, they say you fired. Y'all get that? I, I, I thank God. I'm all off my side. But I thank God for the, for the profession he gave me and for the level of income I was able to make. But listen, I never was sold out to those jobs. I was sold out to Jesus, but I wasn't sold out for that because I knew that I wasn't nothing but a number. I seen it over and over. Y'all can fall in love with these jobs you want to. Go on. That's your bit. Because, see, I, I let everybody sit on their own, but I let you go through this life the way you can go through it the best you can. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, you ain't nothing but a number. When you act up, when, you, when that body break down on you, when, when they tell you to do something that is immoral and is legal and you refuse to do it, they're going to fire you. They ain't going to even let you get back to your dad. They're going to meet you at the door and tell you to goodbye. Don't let the back door hit you where the good Lord split you. And that's it. And you walk around here bragging about how good a job you got. Okay, go on. You're going to find out how good a job you got. See, I seen this as a boy growing up. I seen this. My, my father, we was, they were sharecroppers. I would hear him and a lot of older men. And I'm in my, I'm in these, these kids your age, right? I, I'm, and I'm listening to their conversation. They always bragging about their boss, man. My boss is a good man. I, I can get anything I want from my boss. And, I'm, I'm, and as a child, I'm looking. See, I, I was a thinker. I mean, I, I was thinking kind of a little, I guess maybe a little deeper than I should have as a child. But I'm saying, yeah, I guess they would. Because they weren't paying us but about $5 a day. Break that down, you're getting about 40, 50 cents an hour. I guess I would give you some money when you need it. You got 12 children on my property and, you, and you're working us like slaves. I guess I would give you some money going through the winter time. But what it is, though, is like the, 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 the coal miner people. Like in Tennessee, you, everything you worked on that coal mine that you bought from the store, you had coal miners' money. In other words, Tennessee aren't earning Ford made the statement that more I work, deeper in debt, I get. So every, every season that go by, you owe this man more money. So you stand on this farm and he's working you free. I can see why. And you're living in his shacks. But I remember when my sister wanted to go to school, they didn't want her to go to school. They want to be out there in that field. My sister physically fought my daddy, and that's no small thing, to go to school. And you got these folks now on the bus to go and pick them up and drop them off, and they still won't go. But I seen that. I seen this. And, and I see it now as on these jobs. Now, it's the same thing. We, we get to bragging about how good a job we got. Okay, fine. You, thank God for the job you got, but don't you fall in love with this. Don't you get crazy. Don't you get stupid because you ain't nothing but a number. Watch it. Watch it. That's all I'm saying. And you can be and you can be a good employee with this mindset that whatever you do, you do it to the glory of God. The work you do on that job, you do it to the glory of God. And you can be an excellent employee. Because you're working for the glory of God. Did y'all get it? Y'all, y'all, okay. Take it home and think about it a little bit. You, you can be a good employee and a good faithful employee with that mindset. Well, that's the way I took it. But I'll let you deal with you how you want to deal with it. But they will drop you. You get a new supervisor, don't like you. Have y'all heard something like that? 
you were number one with one, but then you get another one, and you are in the pits. Nothing you can do, nothing you would do will please them. And they conspire to get you fired. And they don't care about you got a house note. Okay, okay. We just talking about money. But listen, listen. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Get ready. Take care of yourself physically. Take care of yourself financially. Take care of yourself. Watch out for these things. You're advancing. We're getting older. You got to take care of, got to be looking more. You don't need all of this stuff. Save your money. You don't need all these jingles and t uh, t the thing, every fat that comes. You don't need all of that. You don't need every hair color and every hair style. You don't need all this stuff. Save your money. Prepare yourself for the future. Are y'all with me? I'm just trying to help you out this morning. There are a lot of stuff you can live without that you think you can't. Look at it and walk on by. But listen, now let, let me get there a little bit deeper. Because listen, uh, Paul is saying, Paul told us over in 1 Corinthians 7, chapter 26, verse, he's, he was seeing some thing that was coming. And I see some thing that's coming. And if you're not blind, you ought to be able to see some thing that is coming. That's why some of the things that, that we, we talked about earlier, we kind of put it on hold because there might be some, some changes and adjustment and the way we've done things in the past for a little bit. But the principles are still true, though. Paul said, I su suppose, therefore, that this is good for the, present, for, for the present distress. I say that it is good for man so to be. As thou art thou bound unto a wife, seek not to be loosened. Art thou loose from a wife, seek not a wife. Paul's seeing something. But, but and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she has not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. But I spare you. Go on. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remained that both they that have wives be as though they have, they had none. And they that weep as though they wept not. And they that rejoice as though they rejoice not. And they that buy as though they possess not. And they that use the world as not abusing it for the fashion of this world pass it away. I would have you without careless, carefulness he that is unmarried care for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. And he goes on here to say, he, he, he is saying that we'll stop right there. But what he was, he's saying that uh, there's a, there, might, there might be some adjustment that we have to make as we go on into the future. Because he's saying persecution coming. Listen, and, uh, I see some things coming to, on, up on the church and up on us that we got to get ready for. But I'm telling you, the principle that I've told you will still work, but there's some mindsets and adjustment where we have to, might have to make. So he's telling the people that is married, not that he's preaching against marriage, but he was saying that for this present moment, for this situation that is coming up on us, there's about to be a lot of changes take place in our society. I just, uh, this package that they're trying to pass right now, this trillion dollars, whatever trillion dollar package, is that within that, have y'all heard about digital coins? There's a lot of stuff that's going around us right now, and we'll just, there's a lot of changes about tech. I keep saying, we are in this thing now. 
We're in this revelational uh, activities now. We're in a lot of things that is taking place and it's taking on taking place quick, and we need to be aware of it. And I'm trying to make you aware that you you seeing advertisement all the time. Tom Brady talking about the digital coins and all that stuff. Well, what in the world is a digital coin? Where did it come from? Pops out of the air. People buy things, buy cars and stuff with it. Well, what is it? Where is it coming from? But what is about to take place, people, uh, I, don't know, I don't know how it's going to happen, but in this package, they said by 2030, America's going digital coins, if not before. We're going cashless. I don't know how they're going to do it, I, but I know they got to crash the dollar. There's got to be some kind of economic collapse. We're already in trillions of dollars in debt. People, I mean, common sense will tell you that you can't continue to borrow money on people and don't pay. If I already owe Brother Chetty $10,000 and I'm only paying my interest rate on it, and he was probably going to say, oh, well, I don't think I'm going to continue lending you money. Right. You, you, you understand? Yeah. This thing is about to collapse. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know how it all going to play out, but we need to have ourselves prepared. Yeah. We need to start trying to get prepared and get out of mind. I don't know that the, the man at McAfee, before he died, he said, one day that you're going to wake up and you won't have nothing in your bank accounts. He said, you're going to be zeroed out. Now, so I don't know how they're going to, if you got $5,000 in the bank, how they're going to replace that with a digital coin to give you $5,000. Well, uh, I don't know what they're going to do. But I know there's a whole lot of scary thing that we're about to face. We're, we're about to face this beast system. We're in the beast system, but we're about to face... And, order, and, and then in order for you to get your money out of bank, what they, they're already telling you, okay, you got to do this and this to, on this COVID thing. You can't even go to restaurants in, in California places. So they're already putting restrictions on you now. D don't you see what, the thing, what, what things are leading to? That every time you make a withdrawal from the bank, they know who did it, where you're at, where you spent it at. They got... Cameras everywhere, watching you everywhere you go. Your cell phone is tracking you everywhere you go. And if you ever act up, you ever be a naughty boy or naughty girl, only thing they got to do is press a button. And you out of the system. You can't buy, sell, work, or anything. Boop. So somewhere I'm saying we're going to have to start making our minds up, understand where we're at and what's going on. So that we can be able to stand. Y'all y'all hear what I'm saying? So Paul is saying because of this distress that I see that is coming, this trouble that, you know, if, if you think about marrying, I would put it off for right now. I, I, I put some things off. They would say I, I would make some adjustments in my life right now. You know, I, I'll pay off my debts and bills and everything right now. They're they telling us also on top of this that you should have some water and stuff like this already in your house. I, you know, he said, we might ought to make some adjustments and things and, and get ready. See, even, even the way we live and see, we, we've been so independent. But before this thing over with, I might have to be over your house living for more than a couple of days. <laughs> We, we, before this thing is over with, people, we might gonna have to be sharing some things and working together. Amen. We 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 might all be start working on this love thing a little bit more. We we all may ought to start working on this uh, compassion thing and and getting along with each other a little bit more. We might all start trying to make some adjustment and get to know you a little bit better because I don't know what this thing gonna boil down to. But it's coming. I do know this. It's coming. 
Probably about, uh, I heard Jeremy say they, they, it might be by 2024 they might transfer this stuff over. But it's coming. We need to get our heads from, from our mind of the sand. See, what, what came to me is that there, there was levels of deception. Kind of like the, the book here. Now, where, where the devil want to keep us at right here? He, he, he want to keep us, but see, look, look at all the other levels of deception. The Bible says men are going, they're, they're deceived and they're being deceived. But he want to keep us right here on the level. He, he want to keep us on football. He want to keep us on going to work. He want, he want to keep us on on what color hair she was wearing and, and she shouldn't have did this to me. It's lower level of craziness. Where, where he want to keep us at. When all the time there's a whole lot of folks that are doing some crazy stuff, evil and wicked stuff, and we don't have a, a clue what's going on. It ain't by chance what we see all these agendas are taking place. It ain't by chance. They've been planning this stuff, folk. This homosexual agenda, they've been planning this. There's a whole lot of stuff they've been planning. It ain't just happened overnight. They've been planning to overthrow this government and overthrow this, this, this uh, money system. They've been planning this, people. Okay. Oh, he's. Yes. Okay. The Bible calls a mystery of iniquity. This thing's so deep. It gets deep. It's deep. And all on top of you got Satan running, running men through all this deception. He's at the top of deception, but he, but there's so many levels. And we got the, the law will open up our eyes to some things if we will allow him to. If we will come out of the dark, if we ask, Lord, open up my eyes, I want to see. But all these guys, and we'll fight over Republican and Democrats, and I like that statement what Jeremy said. They just the same, uh, they the left and the right wing of the same bird. Why are you fighting over them for? Y'all hear? Them? We fight over a lot of silly stuff. Oh, oh, what, what, what? Do you have? Do you go to church on Sundays or do you go on Saturdays? And we'll fight over that. All these silly level stuff. And the devil, long he can keep us fighting with each other. He can be doing his work, and he's doing a very good job. Paul was looking at the coming of the Lord. Even back then, Paul was was thinking about the coming of the Lord is, is, is at hand. And you know what? It is so much closer than it used to be. It is very close. And we need to be preparing ourselves for the coming of the Lord. So at this time, we need to just stay with the basic. Stay with the basic teaching that the Lord has given us because this I know. That the David said, I once was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. If we stay with the word of God, if we stay with what the Lord have taught us, God is going to provide for us. God's going to take us through this some way or somehow. Amen. Amen. And even if he take us through the way of death, he will still take us. Amen. He'll give you dying you know, as I told you this, I'll share it with you again because I'll share it with you again because I'll, I'll walk around scared. I said, Lord, I don't want to deny you. I don't want to die, deny you. And the Lord said, don't worry. He said, first, you got to live for me before you can die for me. I don't know what he told you, but that's what he told me. So ever since then, that's what I'm saying. I've been trying to concentrate on living for him. You tell me you get somebody that is sold out into something and watch them die for it. That's why those guys will fly an a airplane to a building because they sold out and what they believe. The Lord just telling me, sell yourself out to me. You won't, you won't worry about it. Don't worry about dying because you'll do it because you got principles. You, you got, hey, uh-uh, what, what Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death. No, get, 
I'm not crossing this. I'm not bound down to you. That's what Daniel was telling uh, Nebuchadnezzar. That's what the three Hebrew boys were telling uh, Nebuchadnezzar also. I ain't bound down to you. Yes, Mr. King, I know you king. I honor you, but there is no God but God. I ain't bound down to you. <laughs> Throw me in the trash can. Put me in the fiery furnace. Do whatever you want, eh? but I'm not bound to you. It's because they were sold out to him. That's what we have to do, get sold out to God. You don't have to worry about what these folks are doing. So listen, oh, turn to Psalm 149, Jeremy, and 3 to 9. And that's what the Lord is telling us. What are you telling us? Put not your trust in princes. I don't care what these folks are telling you. We need to hear what the voices of the Lord is saying to us. If you're hearing CNN and ABC and, and CBS and all them other alphabets all the time, and then you're hearing all these dandy line prophets, preachers, I ain't putting my trust in science. I'm putting my trust in the Lord. God told, God told uh, uh, Joshua, I want you to hamstring your horses and I want you to burn your chariots. Those, now, those are his high-tech fighting equipment. And God telling Joshua, I want you to hamstring your horses and burn all your chariots. In other words, they don't put your trust in horses and your confidence in chariots. I want you to put your trust in me. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? God ain't turning. He ain't changed. God said, put your trust in, I don't care how many voices. And you know, notice, all the, they throwing that COVID at you all the time. People dying. People dying. They ain't telling you how many people dying that died, got the shot. But they saying, oh, all these people dying are unvaccinated. And that's a lie. And even if they was. They don't change a fiddle dill. What 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 ever happened to uh, mad cow disease? What happened to mad cow disease? At one time, you hear it all over all over the the news and everything. Cow was flopping everywhere, flopping there, flopping. Oh, for Winfrey even opened up her mouth and they shut her up. They shut the O up. I seen a documentary on that, and, and, and that was on Channel 13, and they said, you can't kill this virus. They said they, said they have uh, put radiation on it. They buried it for five years and dug it up, and the virus is still alive. You can't even sterilize it. You, you, you can't even sterilize it. That's what I heard on channel, on our educational channel. That's what I heard. But what happened to it? <laughs> Y'all wrong. <laughs> oh, she said. She said they turned it into COVID. <laughs> but but you but you see, but you see when the news media, which is on about about six big companies, own all the news media, what you hear, they in a word, you you will hear what they want you to hear. So, so only thing we were hearing: mad cow, 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 and only thing we're hearing now. COVID, 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 COVID. Get that ingrained in your head. COVID, COVID, COVID. But you never get it at Walmart, though. You never get it at Sears. You never get it at the grocery store. But you can't say nothing in the church. You got to have a mask on at the church. You, you got it, and everybody did get it. They said, well, we was, they was at church. Really? Really? 
Y'all, y'all hear what, what y'all hear? But look what he's saying. He said, uh, put not your trust in princes and prince. 149. What, what is not saying? Okay. Okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Thank you, thank you. Help me out. I'll get it. Find that. I just miswrote it. But I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna quote it because but but I I evidently I just miswrote it. But he said, uh, "Put not your trust in prince nor in the son of man, in whom there is no help." Amen. Amen. There's no help in man. You you gonna but you are gonna find help. It's one forty six. I'm sorry, one forty six. I'm sorry. Turn there. I bet you'll find it. <laughs> look, look, and three. Put, put not your trust in prince nor in the son of man in whom there is what? No help. No help. I need to hear it say this over. You need to hear it and put this in your head over and over and over. No help, no help, no help. No help. As I said, I ain't arguing with you. I ain't arguing with y'all. Because I'm a strange duck. If you want to go, if you want to go that direction, I'm going to tell you, that ain't the right way to go. The word of God is saying this right here. But if you want to go, bye, go on. Because, you know, the old folks, they always have those, old, those sayings. One of them, they said, every tug going to set us on, a, on its own bottom. All right, so, okay. You have to find out for yourself. But listen, the word of God is saying there is no help in man. God, God, many times he, he, he did this with the children of Israel. He told them, put your trust in me, put your confidence in me. And they kept running to Egypt or kept running to Syria to other people. And for a while, God allowed them to run to them, and they bailed them out. But see, God will set you up. When he find out you're hard-headed and you're stubborn and you're rebellious, he'll set you up. So, he just let them go on to Egypt, kept going to Egypt. Egypt was bringing them out, too. Egypt delivered them there. But then God just setting them up because God told you, I told you, there are no trust, no help in, in, in Egypt. And then God has sent another army along there to defeat Egypt and defeat them, too. So God would tell them, put your trust in me, in me. When, when, when Samuel was, was, was complaining when the people that I want a king like everybody else, and, and the Lord, and, and Samuel thought they was coming against him. And God said, Samuel, it's not you that they're coming against. They're coming against me. It's me that they're coming against. Because they want a king just like everybody else. What the Lord tell us is not going to uh, agree with this world system. With the environment, especially with this environment, it's not going to read because God is spiritual and we are fleshly and sinful. So what God tells us, the world is not going to flock to it. You're going to be on the negative side of a lot of things. You're going to be on the minority side. You just think you're a minority right now. But the minority is going to be black, white, Hispanic, and all that. But because whenever you're standing for God, you're going to be on the minority end. You're not going to be on the majorities. Daniel, when they stood, they didn't say a whole lot of folks stood with Daniel and the, and the Hebrew boys. Everybody else was bound. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing wrong to bow. Ain't nothing wrong to bow. But these guys said, no, we ain't bound. We're going to be stupid just like y'all talk, telling us. We're going to be stupid. We're going to be silly. We ain't bound, though. 
Listen. This is what he's telling us. His breath, this is how man is. His breath go forth, and he, his breath goeth forth, he returned to his earth, and that very day his thought perished. He going to make his last breath. He going to lose. He going to go back to the earth, to the ground that he came to that he originally came out of and all his thoughts going to be perished and you're going to trust in that but know what it says happy is he that has God of, have the God of Jacob for his help happy is that man or that woman that is putting their trust in God who hope is in the Lord his God Happy are you. The Bible said you put your trust in him, he will not make you ashamed. So I'm, I encourage you today to put your trust in the Lord. Now, in time like this, we need people when we really do. And I'm praying that I would be one of these men. But I'll, I'll, I'm also praying that this congregation be such a congregation. Over in 1 Chronicles 12, chapter 32, second verse, there were some men that came to David when David was, it was in distress. There were some men that the, the house of his a car, men of his uh, is a car. And it, 200 came to David. And these men were some men that were leaders. These men had some understanding. And people, what we need for this moment and this time, we, you need some discernment. I've always asked God, God, give me discernment. Well, you need to know the time, the season that we're in. Because if you don't know the time, you don't know the season, you're in, you're in trouble. The Bible told us, can I say it again? The Bible said, as it was in the day of Noah, it shall also be in the days of the Son of Man. We're in a similar time slot. Not only were they just wicked, but there's a whole lot of more evil thing that was going on. They were interbreeding. Angels were interbreeding with the women. They had messed up the gene pool. There was a whole lot more that was going on that, was, that the eye could see. Because the Bible tells you at first that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, and they took them to be wives. And out of that, there was giant that was born. That, that says that. What you going to do with that? Cut that out? They were messing with the gene pool. Don't you know what they're trying to do now? All this stuff is messing with the gene pool. Listen. I'm talking about the levels of, devil, uh, of deception. God is a creator. The devil is a duplicator. What happened to Dolly the sheep? That the croning? Do you think they done stopped that? They try to make them a human. They, they try to do some things. They, as a matter of fact, they're getting, since they discovered DNA, they're getting DNA from an animal and took it up to a human. They're doing all kind of old crazy stuff. They trying to make them a man, a, a, a different kind of man, a species of man. That's why, that's why we're fighting, if you don't understand it, but that's why we're fighting all this new technology they're trying to put in your system because it's a biological, it's a, it's a biotech type of thing. It's, okay. They want to change you. And they're doing it right in front of your eyes, but you ain't looking. They're doing it on Star Trek, but you ain't watching it, though, Sister Linda. They telling you that all in, in front of your face, what they trying to integrate machine with man. He's a duplicator. He's messing with our gene pool. So that so that when the Lord comes, there won't be a man. The species of man. It'll be something grotesque, something different. 
Y'all, y'all hear me? Well, just, you don't have to agree with me. What you can do, just put it back in the back of your head. Just lock, lock, your, lock your, your computer. Just press save. Can you press save? You, I, I'm not asking you to agree with me. I'm just saying press save. I'm going to just keep it back there and, and because later on as I walk down this road, I can pull it back up. It's okay. I remember that preacher said that. You don't have to agree with me. You still saved. I'm still saved. We still love the Lord, right? Your salvation not at stake. But I'm saying there was a whole lot of things. But he told it as it was the days of Noah, so shall it be. So you need to understand and be aware of the time and the season. Because you know what? They were still doing commerce. They were still buying, selling, marrying, giving and marrying. They were still going about the way. I got to go to work tomorrow. My hair needs to be fixed. My nail needs to be dead. They were just, <laughs> they, were, they were just going about their daily activities. And the Lord is telling us that it's the same way today. We, we, we caught up to some things. You need to be aware of what's going on, what these people are talking about. When they talk about human infrastructure, I keep telling you all these names and words that keep popping up. What they mean by human infrastructure? I ain't no building. Not that kind. I ain't no road. You got to start listening to all these words they've been throwing out at you. But these men came, and the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the time to know what Israel ought to do. The head of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. We need to pray that God make us like these men. God, give me understanding. Open, over in Ephesians, that prays that prayer. Open the eyes of our understanding that we know what's going on. When you come to the Lord, he give you light. He, he brings you, you remember that? He brought you out of darkness. Y'all get, y'all understand? One day I thought I was all right. You can tell me I was a, I ain't no sinner. I was in darkness and loving it. And so were you. And that's why the Bible say, list all the long list of things and say at the end of it, say, and such were you. You will, you will, all this what we've been preaching on and more. You ain't, you ain't told all your testimony. You haven't told us everything. And I won't tell them. I don't know about you, but I ain't telling them. Only the Lord and me. Don't tell them everything, sister. Don't tell them everything. They start looking at you funny. Start, start holding their person and holding their children. You start walking by. Don't tell them everything. Tell them just a little bit and let it go. The Lord help me too. <laughs> That's all they need to know. But listen, we we need to pray. God give us understanding of what this time, this season we're in. Because if you don't have understanding of the time and the hour we're in, because we are in a perilous time, we're in a dangerous time, we're in an hour of great, great, great deception. You need to have discernment. You also need to ask God for some courage and some boldness for this hour. He'll give you and I everything we need. He said, I'll supply all your needs. Not only your physical need, but he's going to supply your spiritual needs. But that's why I'm saying that why we'll talk about this money. Because, see, I know even in these tough times, God's going to provide and make a way for you and I. If we do the right thing. You remember what, what Isaiah, they came to the king Hezekiah, told him, you're going to die and you're not going to live. And Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. See, when we do the thing what is right, in the, but the, the testimony of Hezekiah, he was a righteous king. When we do the thing, we, when we do the thing that is right, God going to provide for us. He's going to make a way for us. 
So that's why I'm saying by we stay we stick with the principles. Stay with the thing God have taught us. That's why I keep saying by tithing is so important to us because that that sets that sets a track record. That gives us a track record. To so God in previous time, when everything was good, that's your resume. When when in previous time when everything was was good and I made all this money, you know what I did, Lord? I paid my tithe, I gave an offering, I worked in the church, I bought donuts, I, I brought in coffee, I brought the pastor lunch and some meals. Yeah. You you bring do y'all understand? Look, that God keep records. God watches. Y'all remember the widow woman? She only had two mites. You don't have to have what you have. God ain't worried about how much you keep. Uh, you, you give. He worried about how much you keeping. So listen, listen, listen. He was watching this little woman when she gave. You have not really did service until you give. You haven't completed your worship until you give. He keep records. Everything you do, he keeping records. He's watching. And he going to reward you. Why would he say that every man will have to give an account of himself before God if there's not accountability? If, if you don't have to give an account of something. If you, I said you're a steward. If you don't have to show your books. God got books on you. He know, he know the sacrifices. He, he know that what you did for him. And he's going to reward you for it. Listen. Our attitude towards God is, if our attitude towards God is right, our attitude towards our money is going to be right. And it's just simple as that. If your attitude towards God is not right, your attitude towards your money is not going to be right. Because you're going to be thinking wrong. Amen. Money is going to bring out who you really are. It's going to tell you who you is. Mm-hmm. They don't tell you. If you if you're dishonest, what you get money, you're gonna be you, you, without it. You're gonna be honest when you get it. Dishonest when you get it. It's gonna tell you who you really are. You you if you ain't giving now, if you get a, if you win the lottery, you don't give. You're not going to give. We don't talk about the lottery. Money can be a blessing or a cursing to you. Amen. God want to be a blessing for you, to you, not, a, not, not your cursing. Amen. When you got it, when you got, when you're in this thing right, it will be a blessing. He, he, he'll make he, he, he make you he'll make you rich and he won't add any sorrow with it when God give you when God bless you there will not no be no sorrow in what he's have given you but when you got this money all the other kind of ways there's gonna be sorrow with it amen God told us also that over in and you don't have to turn to exact exodus 23 14. He told them to come before him uh, uh, three times, I believe, in a year. And every time he told them, he said, when you come to me, but don't come to me empty. <laughs> he told them over in the 15th verse, he said, don't appear me before me empty. Don't come before God empty-handed. Okay. Y'all y'all, y'all got that. Okay. Bring an offering. Make your worship complete. Bring an offering. Let God know where he really is at in your life. Because, see, your money is close to you. It's close to your heart. Right? 
Let I, I need I need some people. I I well I'm too scared. I I can't do that. But if I go in in one of y'all purses, I'll you let me know how close money is to you. Won't you? Won't you? You don't care about no pastor. Uh, you know, uh, nobody, nobody. You know, I you I I find out how close money is to you. Because it represents you so well. Money represents us so well. It represents our strength. It re represents our, uh, our talents and our ability, our education. It represents us so well. So it's so attached to us. That's why God said, you know, wherever your, your treasure is going to be, that's where your heart will be. Now, you, if you give your treasures to God, you know where your heart is going to be at? It's going to be going up to. That, that's where your treasures is really is at, into the things of God. Wherever your money is at, that's, that's where your heart is going to be at. Pickpockets say they, they know where your money is at because you're always feeling on patting. And that's why they know where your money is at. You got your purse, you holding it. They say, okay, that's where it, that's where it. That, that's where that money is at. And they know where to go. Amen. Listen, as I said earlier, God is keeping records. And, and he keep real good records. But uh, while we're here on this earth, this little short space of time we're here, you know, 60, 70 years ain't long. Come on, all, all, this, all this in the latter part, y'all know that ain't long. Come on, can I get a witness? Amen. It was just like it was yesterday. We were running around here barefoot, right? Amen. Now now we 60-something, 70-something years old. It's just short time. Amen. We're here just for a short moment, a breath, a a. a just a breath. That's all we're here for. But while we're here, we need to make sure that we use this time wisely. Amen. Because this minute that just been spent, we can't get it back. Let's use it wisely. And the best investment we can make is in the things of God. Our lives put it invested in the Lord. You ain't going to get no return out of playing football or being a professional football or a, a doctor. All that, all that stuff is going down. Amen. God ain't going to recognize you because you was a great surgeon. Yeah. He's not going to recognize you because you was the world's uh, richest man. Yeah. No, all that is not. All that is nothing. Yeah. Paul said, I count all my gain is but done that I might know him. People, the only thing that you're going to have before you that God going to recognize and honor is your wor is your life in Christ. Amen. That you accepted his son. That you live for him. You, you walk while you were down here on this earth. You walk down here for him. You live for him. You told this world, I choose Jesus when you could have went with Billy. And Susie. You know, she came at you strong, too, but you said, I choose you, Lord. Y'all know what I'm talking about? They offer you a lot of money just to lie and steal, but you say, no, I'll take, the, I'll take the demotion, I'll take the fire, but I choose you, Lord. God said, I recognize that. Your sacrifice and your labor that you show towards his name, God said, I recognize that. Not all, all that other stuff, God said. Listen, real quickly, real quickly, and then we gonna, we, we're closing. Amen. Understand God's own it all. God is your provider. Amen. Be careful with those personal pronouns, minds and ours. Institute the word, the Lord's. All right. God have allowed you. That's a privilege. Allowed you. To be steward over his possession. Don't you know what that's an honor? 
who will, who will, who would hot who would allow you to to be over their bank account? Their possession. But God has ever allowed you, trusted you with these things. Amen. Listen, work. Be people that go to work. Amen. We 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 we've getting out, we've gotten ourselves into a welfare state. And the government wants you in a welfare mindset. They want you so they can you can depend upon them. And they're gonna do they ain't gonna do nothing but throw some crumbs to you. That's all it is. That's all that is is just crumbs. Keep you begging. Just enough. Yeah, now y'all know like say, and I'm not down to nobody, but y'all know these little checks we get ain't enough. Ain't enough. Amen. Plan. Sit down and make a plan out. Plan on 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 your saving and, and what you need to do. Put it back. Plan. Continue to give. I know the enemy fights you. But we, we need to get to the point where he don't fight us anymore. We need to mature to a place where he don't fight us anymore. Because now it's already a thing that's ingrained in you. That, that you say, hey, oh, no, this is just life for me. This is a part of my life. You know, I told you, you know, all, all up the line the devil fought me. $10, $20, $30, $50. And when you start looking at it, $75 and 100 he really. But you got to get past all that. Because every time, every time I get a bill, they hundred, two hundred, three hundred, and I'm I don't walk around the house all the time. I don't want to write, want to write this. Why do I have to write this check? Why, why do I give up? I just write it. Get old people their money. You need to just give God what belongs to Him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Don't spend everything you get. Save it. Save some of it. Do 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 this. Do do this right. If you don't do nothing else, start with this. You pay the Lord ten percent. Pay yourself ten percent. At least ten percent. Put it away. This this it's 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 not for you to touch. It's your saving. Amen. Amen. If Johnny go to jail, Johnny go to jail. But he don't touch your saving. That's your savings. Y'all, y'all, y'all hear me? Save. Because see, I don't care where we at. I can I can go back. I'm trying to close. But I can go back to my life and look at all the ship that I've came in and I let them go by. Because I wasn't ready. I wasn't in the place to invest. I, I didn't have my money right, and I should have had it, but every one of us, I don't care where you at in life, you're going to have opportunity to make investment, to make some money, but you've been asleep, and you, you, you were somewhere off. I can tell you some time, a lot of time, when things that came by, they had a time in Garland when, when back in the 80s or so, they were selling three-bedroom brick houses for $5,000. And that's a ship I let sail by. Scared. Money wasn't right. Didn't want to take that leap. But it, I know I could if I would have went on out and through. But you and I going to have investment like that and opportunities like that going all the time. There was a man that, that, that wanted to sell me on top of that hill and rock wall. They got a big old hotels and everything around there. He had about a half acre, and he, he was willing to sell it to me, and I didn't buy it. You, if you go back and think, you have a head opportunity too. But you were asleep. You wasn't, your mind wasn't right. I don't, I don't care. I don't, I don't care how. 
It don't matter how much money you got right now, but you just wasn't right. But we, we, we need to get out of that place because things are still going by and we're still letting them go by. When it's all over, said, and done, there's going to be millions of dollars go through our hands. And we're going to look around and say we ain't kept none of it. But everybody else got rich off of you, though. Father, we give you praise. Amen. We give you glory and we give you honor. We thank you, Father, for this, what you have done for us and is doing in our lives. And we thank you, Father, as we're going through this season of troubles and trials and testing. And, and many of us don't understand what's going to be around the next corner. But I know, God, that you're the God that is around every corner. You were already in today making plans for us and guiding us and directing us. And so shall you be throughout our lives, Father, that you have every hair numbered. God, that you see us and you know us, Father, and that you supply our every need. Father, I speak peace over your people. I speak quietness over their hearts and mind. Father, I speak a stillness in their hearts, God, that they'll look unto you, the author and the finisher of their faith. Let our eyes always be upon you today, God. Let us be focused on things above and not on the things of this earth. Keep your sheep, God. Keep your lamb, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.